Thank you so much for joining us uh, this day, ladies and gentlemen, uh, on the first program for the week views on the continent. And today we are looking at uh, the uh, geopolitical implications uh, of uh, the uh, U.S. and NATO support for uh, Ukraine, of course. Uh, we are asking uh, this question if uh, the support uh, from the U.S. and uh, other NATO uh, countries is actually ex uh, uh, actually helping out to quell the crisis or is it foiling the crisis and impeding the peace, uh, the peace process? Uh, that is what we are looking up uh, today in the, the program views and the continent. We want to get your own understanding of where the crisis in Ukraine is uh, regarding our uh, beer support, uh, uh, be it in military form, economic, and of course, uh, financial uh, support from the United States and uh, of course all the NATO countries coming at a time where we see a strong resistance even from uh, uh, people around the United States calling for the uh, government to uh, actually stop uh, foiling the, uh, the proxy war in uh, Ukraine, uh, blaming this support for derailing uh, a peaceful and practical solution to the bilateral uh, disagreement between uh, uh, the Ukraine and the Russian Federation. You are most uh, welcome just to remind you that uh, this is informative as well as interactive program put together. Uh, for one hour, we're going to be assessing, analyzing uh, these uh, very important uh, topic, uh, assessing the geopolitical implications of uh, the uh, uh, US and NATO support for Ukraine, and uh, I will be glad to introduce to you this X team uh, panel that will give us, uh, uh, of course, highlight or insight on uh, the development in Ukraine, and of course, looking at uh, the uh, uh, ramifications of uh, the support. Let me uh, let me take you now to the United States of America, precisely uh, in uh, Nashville, Tennessee. We are meeting Steve Gill, who is a political commentator, and is joining us this day to give highlight on this very important topic. Hello Thank to you, you, Steve. It's a, a pleasure having you on Africa Media Television for the first time. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. It's always a pleasure having you to share your own perspective uh, on <clears> what <throat> is happening, especially as uh, the war between or the crisis between uh, Russia and Ukraine are uh, concern. And now let's go to Russia. We're meeting uh, Yulia Berg, joining in her capacity as a political scientist. It's a pleasure having you this day, dear Yulia. Hello, it's always a pleasure to be here and thank you for raising the most topical issues. I should be saying thank you for honoring uh, this uh, invitation as we continue to understand and to throw more light on the development uh, in uh, the uh, Ukraine. And today we are focused is on uh, the uh, call uh, by some people and even some pundits have been very critical about uh, the role of uh, the US and other NATO countries uh, regarding uh, their position in the crisis uh, uh, between uh, the uh, Russian Federation and of course, uh, Ukraine. Uh, let's uh, dive straight away uh, to understanding uh, the uh, implications of this, especially geopolitical in, uh, implications. I start off with you, uh, dear Yulia. Uh, according to some critics, U uh, Ukraine's counter uh, offensive depends solely on uh, the uh, US and uh, NATO uh, support, uh, that is, the arms support for Kyiv, uh, thus derailing uh, peace process and exacerbating the crisis. So what is your perspective? Do you share the same uh, uh, view as far as this premise is concerned? Well, um, Ukrainian counteroffensive, uh, so-called, that's uh, the topic that was being discussed starting from spring. And mostly uh, it was something used uh, to manipulate the European Union, the US, and to justify it to the public that more and more aid would be provided, right? So it was being announced starting from uh, spring this year, and then it was um, kind of scheduled for the summer. Uh, nothing ever really happened in terms of a full-scale counteroffensive. 
And then it was, uh, you know, in rhetorics and the public space, uh, it was moved to the fall, but then nothing followed, but random, uh, you know, attacks uh, trying to check uh, the air defense, trying to check the defense and find the weak spots uh, on the uh, Russian positions. So um, I would say that mostly it was something existing uh, as an egregor of a kind just only in the public space to be able to ask for more and more uh, money for more and more ammunition coming in. Uh, and I think now they will be talking about, you know, uh, fall as not the best season for a counteroffensive. They will be talking about uh, filling it for winter when the snow falls and when the ground freezes and everything else. And, uh, you know, last forever, because the, uh, the purpose of this one is just to uh, is just to be getting more and more uh, funds and to be justifying it in front of the uh, public, because Ukraine at the moment is quite a failed state. Uh, it cannot exist without foreign aid. It cannot exist without foreign financial aid, military aid and to a certain extent, uh, um, you know, advisors. So that's that's the. Uh, tragical state of affairs in uh, in modern ukraine